Good morning, my friends, and welcome back to our live stream. This is our 16th live stream from Row Gallery here in beautiful Tlacopaki. We have our right-hand crew here from Red Rock TV. Randy will convey questions that you may have, so please engage and answer or ask questions that you may have. Make the live stream come to life. This is Little Snickle Fritz, and I'm Ken. I'll let him get back to work. So it's been six weeks since we've seen you last time and believe me, we haven't forgotten about you because we've been documenting the casting process on Simba this whole time. And so the Red Rock TV crew and I have been to the foundry. We've been documenting all the various stages. So it leads to the number one question I have been asked over the 15 years or 20 years I've been here in Tlacopaki is how do you cast this in bronze? So this is the original. It's a lost wax casting process, so we're documenting all this as we go through. The film you're about to see was filmed on Wednesday, which I will narrate and explain as we go, so I'll be able to answer questions at any, any time that you want to ask. Um, so Lee, if we can get some of that going for us, we'll get it, I'll get it on my video. And this is the casting process. So what you're seeing here is the rubber mold has been made of Simba. So what Jeff Christensen, the mold maker, is doing here is he's pulling out the wax that was reproduced from that mold. So this explains a lot of the casting processes in the sense that there's a series of positive and negatives. The wax is now a positive that comes from that mold. Okay, so now we have the wax head and all these various colored waxes that you see are being put on the head that will allow the bronze to flow into the head properly. So keep in mind now these are sprues that allow the wax, I mean allow the bronze to flow into the head. Ken, we have a couple of viewers coming in already. All right. Rebecca Ledbetter just saying awesome. She's oh, very thank excited. you, Rebecca. And Debbie Himsel, so excited oh, to see your yeah. piece come to life. Oh, Folks me too. Are already excited and weighing in here. Thank you guys. So now this is the investment. This is a very, very important stage where they're actually taking a ceramic slurry and investing it around the wax. This will become a negative that the bronze would pour it into. Now what you're seeing is a sand slurry is put over the top of the ceramic to give it tooth for the next layer. Tooth being an abrasive that will help it adhere to the next layer. This is going to happen over a period of about two and a half weeks where they're going to keep applying layers of the ceramic over the wax. So again, now we're developing what will be a negative of the wax head that you saw. It goes up on a shelf to dry, probably maybe two layers a day. It will be built up to probably about a half of an inch thick and it will air dry and cure as hard as a dinner plate. Now all these that you see in the picture here are pieces of the wax. There's the feet that they're, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to invest those into the liquid ceramic just like the head. Now here's the head. After about three weeks you can see the thick casing around the wax. Now they're going to, they're going to burn the wax out of that ceramic shell. That furnace is 1800 degrees it's critical that all the wax is melted out of that ceramic. So now this is the stage they call lost wax because the wax is lost from the ceramic shell. And as you can see that is super hot. Now this is the negative. That's the ceramic again after it's cooled off. And here we are. Now this is very dangerous that kiln or that furnace is over 3,000 degrees and it's taken them almost four hours to melt the bronze that's inside that furnace that's contained by a crucible. So those tongs you see here will lift the crucible with 300 pounds, I'm sorry, 200 pounds of molten bronze at 2,200 degrees. You can imagine a lot of things can go wrong at this stage. If any water gets in this, any debris, it can be a real problem. As you can see, they have their hazmat suits on. They're using an electric hoist to raise this crucible. They're putting it in a bracket that will help them hand hold 
and pour the bronze from the crucible. Carefully lowering it in. You can see that's very hot. Now they have to attach that crucible to the bracket that they're going to use to pour. This is the bracket that holds the crucible in place. If that thing falls off, you can only imagine what could happen. That secures a crucible. Now, they have to clean the slag or any debris off the top of that molten bronze with this apparatus. So on your right of the screen, this is the furnace that's heating up all the ceramic shell. And you can see that is super hot. They heat that up, which allows the bronze to flow into all those extremities in that ceramic shell. The electric hoist is used here to raise it. Again, 200 pounds of molten bronze at 2200 degrees. Very carefully, they have to aim that molten bronze into the ceramic shell. It's beautiful. Clear to the top. Now this is highly orchestrated where everybody has a specific job to make sure there's no accidents. The bronze has a beautiful transparency to it. It almost looks like glass. You imagine all the work that goes into this just to get to this stage, we're talking weeks and maybe hundreds of hours just to get to this stage of the casting process. Now, the next pour you're going to see is they're pouring into that lion, the lion mold. There's the hoist. This is the head of the lion. Ken, we have Sylvia Herbert. Hey, Sylvia, sis. Hey, good morning. Shout out from her. That is a hot furnace, exclamation point. <laughs> yes, it is Great hot. Great visuals, and she's complimenting our filming. Awesome filming. Oh, I, Thank you, Sylvia. Absolutely. Absolutely. Shirley is weighing in. The teamwork's right. amazing. <laughs> Shirley, you were there. So this is the last ceramic slurry or shell they'll pour into. So they've probably dispensed oh, 150 pounds of bronze already out of that crucible. We're standing probably 30 feet away from this and you can feel the heat coming from that that crucible and the furnace. And when they do this, they'll do about three pours a day. So that crucible goes back into the furnace and they start loading it back up again with bricks of bronze to melt. And again, probably now that the furnace is up and running an hour and a half between pours. More people coming in, Ken. Lorna Greer saying hi. Hi, Lorna. Lauren and Lorna, SoCal. Gosh. Oh, Good to hear Deb from Debbie you. Debbie Hemsel's got a great question. She's asking you, Ken, what are the differences in foundries? You know, they all have their own techniques, but basically um, it, it's like establishing a rapport with a good barber or your beautician. They know what you want, and it makes it a lot less painful if you're not there every week just trying to hang over their shoulders and find out what kind of job they're doing. I. I th the foundries are amazing artists. They're, I have so much respect for what they do, so I try to stay out of the hair as much as possible. I trust this foundry, and by the way, this is Thumb Butte Foundry, 
Megan, the owner, has been very accommodating in this entire process. She f filmed some of the footage of this, too. But yeah, it's a good question. It's just basically the people you get along with. So the crucible is going back into the furnace for the next batch. This is pretty dramatic. Lowering it back in. Again, we've got um, Dave and Linda North. Oh, Dave. Just very this, excited to see this being born and looking forward to having this one is, in Montana. Dave, this is your cat right here. This is cat number two, and this is yours being poured right here. No, now, the ceramic shell that was around that wax, now is full of bronze. The only way to expose the bronze, guess what, is to bust the ceramic slurry off. It looks as though he's hitting the bronze, but he's not. The vibration from that hammer is breaking the ceramic. This is so dramatic for me as an artist to see this part of it where your bronze is actually born from fire. This, this is it for me, I love it. And they do such an amazing job here at the foundry. Jen Farnsworth, our good friend, and yes. talent in her own right, just saying how amazing it is oh, to see this process. Thank you, Jen, yes. You see how easily that, that breaks off now, think of all the parts that this is going to be cast into. Every one of these parts has to be welded back together. Now, you remember those sprues I mentioned earlier, the, the different colored wax? That's what he's busting the slurry off right now. So, all those parts are casted separately. So, this lion was casted in probably 15 different pieces. So, now, we have to weld all those parts back together again and that's going to be our next segment we're going to have on the live stream. So we think it's going to be about two weeks. We'll keep you posted and when the founder is ready to start welding it together we're going to show you the welding. We're going to show you how they disguise the welds by grinding them to match my texture and then the next show after that will be the actual patina of number one. So any questions you have we be glad to answer them couple things here, Ken. Rosemary Farnsworth. Oh, yes. And she's, this is very interesting. Your earlier shows, starting the sculpture process plus other processes, including the current film, would make a wonderful documentary. Oh, thank you. Interesting point. Yeah, and that's a great thing. I, I appreciate you bringing that up because all this is documented on our YouTube channel. If you go to our, our website, click on the YouTube icon, and every step from Simba being, you know, the skeleton, the, the muscles, the finished sculpture to what you saw today is all documented on our website on the YouTube channel. So please go to that. You can get caught up on this entire process. A couple so, more things real quickly, Ken. Rafter Ranch, uh, their technique ah, is amazingly choreographed. And yes. they are brave. <laughs> they are. doing this. Wonderful video. Yeah. Uh, Debbie coming in again, Himsel, thanks so much. So informative. And then yeah. Shirley's. Uh, got a great question. What's the title of the sculpture that you're standing by? Oh, it's oh oh. This is this is home on the horizon. So that's a good point. This is a piece that's in the works. It would be molded and casted just like you saw Simba being done. But uh, so this is the female wolf, the mother wolf with her. There's three cubs, two cubs here, and the third one over here that I'm still working on. So this will be casted in bronze too. And it will probably be finished probably by, well, the people that have ordered it are going to get it before Christmas. So it'll be, it's soon to go to the foundry. But as you can imagine, all the steps that are going to take place, as you've seen thus far, this is a very complicated piece. This will be cut into more pieces than the mountain lion has been cut into. So anyway, with... One more quick comment okay. that I wanted to, to, to give you here from Sylvia Herbert. Uh, she says, it takes a village, exclamation points. Yes. No wonder it costs what it does. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so much work, so many steps. I so wish foundries were more accessible for us to give tours because nobody that's ever saw a foundry didn't, didn't leave there just astonished at the time it has taken people, to, the artists, to make this happen. And you'll see more of those artists with the next segment we do with this welding of the piece together, the grinding and the patina. It's, it's just nonstop right to the end. So I greatly respect the foundries and their artists. We couldn't do without them. So with that said, thank you so much for making this a, a great success. 
We love you guys. We're only a phone call away. Go to our website to check out any new pieces that we have. And we'll keep you posted on when the next segment will be airing on Casting That Mountain Lion.